guys welcome to yet another video of code from scratch today i want you to pause and give yourself a good pat on the back for showing up for investing your time and energy into a skill that is going to help you so much it is going to help you crack some good interviews get your job that you really want so it deserves some appreciation especially for a topic like binary trees which is so so important so you deserve the appreciation remember that you are investing yourself your time and energy in the right place so you need to practice also along with me okay so today what we are going to do is that we are going to uh, pick up a very basic question just like yesterday and we are going to make sure that our binary tree basics is right that we are able to understand the recursion happening in trees and tomorrow we are going to increase our level up so today also we will try to write the code in two ways and try to understand that okay what's the difference between them and how and what are the trade offs in writing a code in a particular way so let's get started so this is the question that we are going to do today sum of binary tree so again you are given a binary tree you are passed a node so every node has what it has a key so again there is an integer value for every node and every node will have two children there will be a left children there will be a there will be a left child there will be a right child now suppose the child is not present so in that case left or right will point to null pointer okay so you are given a binary tree over here you are given the root node and then okay every node has children 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 so it is hierarchical structure what do you have to do you have to uh, complete this function that returns the sum of all the nodes of the given binary tree what do they mean by sum of all the nodes so every node has a key right some integer value corresponding to that so we have to sum all the keys present in all the nodes and we have to return the final answer to that so if you notice we have to return long int why is that see whenever you add integers you have to make sure that okay your sum doesn't go out of bound of integer like it doesn't overflow the integer max value so whenever you have to uh, make additions or multiplications it is a good thing it is an edge case that you should ask your interviewer that uh, will my sum be able to come under uh, will the value be under int max or will it overflow so should i have uh, my answer in long int so this is a good thing to note over here that we have to return in long int now the if you notice the question is very very similar to the last question that we did in the last question we were counting the number of nodes that were there in the binary tree in this question what are we doing we are uh, finding the sum of all the nodes that are present so let's see how we can do that the first thing that we will do is to add a base condition why do we need add a base condition to uh, make sure that okay recursion is stopping over here and to avoid stack overflow in trees question now if you uh, other than stack overflow there is one more question why we are adding the base conditions see if we don't add what will happen is inside this code somewhere you will refer to the left child right child like this root ka left root ka right now anywhere whenever you are dealing with trees and because this is a pointer you are going to refer to the children by this root ka left root ka right by this arrow state now if this root is null then what will happen your uh, Uh, you will end up having like a crash because this value is null you cannot refer to the left value or the right value of the root there basically in c++ whenever you reference null pointer ka left or right you will end up getting runtime error so you have to make sure that whenever you are referencing to a left child or to a right child you have to make sure that okay the root value is not equal to null so only then you can refer to the children coming back to our code we will write our base condition so our base condition is going to be what that if root value is equal to basically null then what are we going to do basically there are no elements only so what will be the sum of elements in that case it will be zero only so we can just return zero from here itself otherwise so if that is not equal to null what are you going to do we are going to return first we have to add the value that is present in that particular node then what do we do what are the sub problems the sub problem will be that we find the sum of the nodes of the left sub tree and of the right sub tree we will see it properly don't worry so first we have added the key value of that particular node then we will take the sum of the left sub tree so how are we going to do that we are going to call the same function for root ka left and then what are we going to do we are going to again call the same function for root ka right so some be binary tree we are going to call the same thing for root ka right so basically this is giving you sum of all the nodes on the left sub tree so basically there is a node on the left there is a child on the right there is a child now it might be null it might not be null we don't care because we are putting the checks over there so if it is null it will return as zero so it's fine so we can just put it uh, we can just Uh, find the sum like this so this is the sum of the left sub tree this is the sum of the right sub tree and then we are adding the key value and then together we will have the bigger sum right so we have converted our bigger problem to smaller sub problems now let's try to run it and see compile let's submit 
So see this worked. Why did it work again? See, we put a check that okay, the root value is null. Basically, we don't have to return anything. We can just return zero. There is no value over there. Otherwise, we added the key value, the value that is presently at the node. Then we took the sum on the left subtree and we took the sum on the right subtree and we added all the three and we had our answer, right? Now, because we have this check over here, we can keep calling the left and the right without putting any checks. Now, suppose we did not have this suppose okay so in the question it is given to us that at least one node is going to be there so because of that the first time this function is called we know that okay root is not going to be null so because of that we can actually avoid a base condition and what do we do we call this function only if we are sure that okay root left value is there so what am i going to do i'm going to put up a check that if root ka left value is there then you call this otherwise you add the value zero Similarly, over here also what am I going to do? I'm going to check that if root ka right value is there, then you call this. Otherwise, what are you going to do? You're going to just add zero itself over there. See, if there is nothing on the left side, basically I don't call the function. So I see, what if I did not put this check? I did not put the base condition only and I call this. Now, when I go on the left side and suppose there is nothing, when I do left note plus ka key, because this is null, it is going to give me runtime error. It is going to crash. So I don't want that. So what am I going to do? I'm going to put up a check that call this only if root curl if value is present. So this, this thing is making sure that okay, it is not equal to null. I'm calling the function only when the left, there's something present on the left side. Similarly, when there's something present on the right side only, I am calling this. Otherwise, I'm just adding the value zero. Okay, now let's try running it and see. See, this works, we have submitted and this worked. See, this is how you will see like one-liner solutions and you will go like, oh, the people are so smart, they're able to write one-liner uh, solutions. But see, there are uh, pros and cons of writing code like this. Firstly, here, okay, it was given to us that, okay, n value will at least be one. So we were sure that, okay, the root value will never be null. But what if someone else calls the function? So in real life, whenever we start writing code and interviews also, we should always say that it is better to have a check that, okay, we will put a check over here that if root value is equal to null, or basically you can also write like if not root, then we will just return zero. I know this is an extra check, but what happens over here, we are sure that, okay, at least our function will never crash. And your interviewer will actually appreciate you for that. But you have to mention that, okay, these are the pros and cons. And by putting this check over here, what are you doing? You are making sure that you are not doing some unnecessary function calls. Why are we not doing any unnecessary function calls? Because we are calling the function only when we are sure that, okay, there's a left child present, there's a right child present. Otherwise, what would have happened? There is a tree. We are always calling the left child. We are always calling the right child. We are returning zero only when we have like reached the uh, null value nodes. Basically, after the leaf nodes also, we are checking for the left and the right. We don't need that, right? So that is why this is a good way of writing code according to me because you're putting a check, you're making sure that you'll never crash. And you also are making sure that, okay, you are checking and you're not making any unnecessary recursive calls. You are not increasing a recursive stack space. Okay, so now another thing is that what is the time and the space complexity of such code? So you are given a binary tree of size n. What does size n means? That means that there are n nodes present. And now you're going to go to all the nodes exactly once. See, when you're going to left, again, you're going to left, you're going to left or you're going to right, you're going coming back, right? So you are visiting all the nodes once, right? And that is the time and the space complexity. Why the space complexity also? At a time, say you have all the nodes on your left side only. So if there is a node and all the other nodes are on the left, 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 left. So what happens? Your recursive stack will look like what? So basically all your end nodes will end up becoming in will end up coming in one recursive stack, right? Because you're going to call the function again and again for each node. So basically your recursive stack at max can have order of n space. So your auxiliary space complexity becomes order of n again. Why? See at a time, say your uh, tree has only nodes on left or on right. And why is that possible? Because we are dealing with binary tree. Again, binary tree can have either one or two children. So even like if the nodes are present only on the left side or only on the right side, so it can look like this. It will basically look like linear tree only, but in truth, it is like hierarchical. There is no left side or there is no right side, okay? So in that case, how big your recursive stack will be? Because you're going to keep calling the recursive function again and again, right? You're going to keep calling this. You're going to keep calling it for like children. So your recursive stack will 
at max take order of n space and since you are visiting all the nodes once your time complexity becomes order of n if it is not clear let me know in the comments i am here to help you out but this is done so tomorrow we are going to increase the level slowly slowly and we are going to take up more questions okay see you tomorrow tata -ta.